welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I want what God has promised, don't you? If you're going to change anything, you're going to have to do it by faith in the Word of God. I hope for the things that God has promised us. When we speak words, we see, we create images. So we don't see words, but we see images. So when we begin to proclaim what the promise says, if you give, it shall be given unto you, good measure. I call it Jesus 638. Give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men shall give unto your bosom. We proclaim that. Speak it, proclaim it in the face of apparent lack. Why? Because it's a promise of God. Now, that promise will do very little in this book to change situations for you. It has to get on the inside of you. Now, remember, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Ask what you will. Other scriptures that, you, that Jesus said, he said, pray what you will, say what you will, and it shall be done. It'll work by praying, saying, or believing, or all three. So this is the way you change situations. That's the reason I call it the law of change. If you're going to change a situation, you've got to say something you haven't been saying. I know I've, I've used this many times, and I'm sure when I was here. And that elevator is one of the best illustrations of this. You walk up to an elevator. You don't punch the floor you're on. If you do, you're going to stay right there. <laughs> you call for what you don't have. You go in on the first floor, and you want to go to the fourth floor. You punch the fourth floor. You don't punch the basement. <laughs> And you call for where you're not. You call for it. Now, why do we do that? Because we believe in that elevator. We know. We have enough knowledge of that to know, and, and we have experience with it. That we know that we have to punch where we are not. And we have to say things that are not yet manifest in our life to create the image of that. It's in your mouth and in your heart, the Apostle Paul says. So it's first in your mouth. Then it gets in your heart. The more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you say it. Now, God told Joshua, let not this book of the law, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do. Now, now it means to observe to do. That means to sort of see it, doesn't it? Somebody said, I observed that. Well, it means essentially they saw it that you may observe to do all that's written therein. In other words, if you speak the word long enough, get it on the inside of you to where it abides in you, then you will know and be led by your spirit how to cause the manifestation of that promise to come to pass in your life. You'll be led by your spirit to be in the right place at the right time for the right situation. I've seen it happen many, many times. But yet, if, if you turn that thing around, like most people have uh, done it in days past, and that is, you, you call for what is, the mountain's getting bigger, I'll never get over it. Dear God, how are we going to get out of this situation? Then you're, you're making the mountain bigger. You're seeing it on the inside as being insurmountable. We'll never overcome it. And the more you say that, the more unbelief rises up on the inside of you. And you know, it's, it's amazing, but uh, some people can destroy their faith in praying when they pray. If you pray and pray <laughs> what the devil said, Lord, I prayed not working out, things getting worse. We're never going to get over this situation. Now, how do I know that? I've been there and done that. Don't want to do it no more. Lord said to me one morning, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying. He said, no, you're complaining. 
And besides that, he said, I, I, I'd appreciate it if you quit coming to me and tell them what the devil said and called it praying. That'll jerk the slack out of your rope. <laughs> he said, the problem is you pray too quick. Now, that really shocked me. He said, you'd be better off studying the Word of God, meditating the Word for a week, a month, a year, till faith comes. Then pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, the Word says. Then it would seem like the prayer of doubt might destroy the sick. So if we pray in faith, we're going to change some things because it is the law of change, but that must abide in you. It has to abide on the inside of you. And the way you get it in you is by speaking, quoting, and saying what God said in His Word until it comes to pass. And God told Joshua, Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You'll have good success, and you'll make your way prosperous. Now, who was going to make his way prosperous? He said, Joshua would, by being obedient to the Word of God. So when Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, he didn't just mean if you're born again. If he just said, if you abide in me, ask what you will, and it shall be done, we'd all let it made. But he said, that my words abide in you. So the word's in your mouth, and it's in your heart. It gets on the inside of you. Now, let's use an illustration here, the substance of things, that uh, uh, any photograph that you see in a newspaper, if you get close enough to put a magnifying glass on it, you see it's, it's made up of a series of dots. In fact, any printed material is made up of a series of dots. Those dots are rearranged and colored differently, and it, it produces a photograph. And if you take a magnifying glass, and, and you don't even have to have it in newspaper, you can see it with a natural eye, they, they, you can see those dots there. Well, let's call faith the dots. Now, a, a photograph may have, say, I don't know, a thousand dots in it or 500 dots in it. Now, it's how you rearrange the coloration of those dots that creates the image. So let's say that the Word of God is filled with faith because we know that's what the Apostle Paul says. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. But sometimes people have a, have a, think they have a, a better idea. They're going to rearrange the dots. Well, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but now here's the way I believe it. Yeah, you're rearranging the dots. We speak it the way God said it, and it causes faith to come. When anyone says, I know the Bible says that, but... Here's the way I believe it, or here's the way I take that. They're casting out the Word in favor of what they believe. Now, if you've been taught wrong, you're going to believe wrong. There's no doubt about that. Faith cometh by hearing. Whether you're hearing the Word that's right or hearing the Word wrong, faith will come. If you go back to Hebrews 11, 1, so then, uh, you know, said... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the sub substance of what you hope for. It's the evidence of what you can't see. Where does the hope come from? Word of God. Where does fear come from? Words of the devil are something contrary to the Word of God. Now, Job said, the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. He didn't just fear, he was highly developed in some stages of fear. And we, we found out that it came to pass. But if we will proclaim what God said, it causes faith to come and it gets on the inside of us. Now, Jesus said it this way in Matthew uh, chapter 12. He said, that the kingdom of God uh, well, I'm getting, let's go back to Matthew 20, Matthew uh, 13. Kingdom of God is if a man cast a seed into the ground. The seed should spring and grow up and he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself. Now, in the parable of the sower, the, the soil was 
allegory of the heart of man that will produce whatever you plan in it. Whether it's right or wrong. So you, you must be careful what you plant in your garden. How many of you know that? Now somebody said, well, I'm just leaving, you know, I'm, just, I'm not going to confess the Word. I'm just going to leave it all up to God. Have you ever left your garden up to God and see what happens to it? <laughs> Grew up in weeds and cucumbers and Johnson grass, nothing good to eat. You have to make a demand on that soil to produce, and you have to take care of it. And that's what we do when we take God's Word and get it in our mouth. We're planting seeds, and Paul said it's in your mouth, and then it's in your heart. The more it gets in your mouth, the more it gets in your heart, in your mouth and in your heart. So let's go back to the photograph now. Those dots, they can be rearranged. Now people can read the Word of God and hear exactly what it says, but then they say, but yeah, now here's the way I believe it. Well, we found one of the problems then. They don't believe it the way the Word said it. And uh, I've said this many times, I'll say it again. Just read the red and do what he said. <laughs> you can't get it much more simple than that. Just read the red and do what he said. So when we take God's Word as being the truth, you know, in John chapter 1, we stopped short of it a while ago where we were reading where it says that uh, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. Grace came by Jesus Christ. God's willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Jesus came to bring the manifestation of God to this earth. He was, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, I do that which I see my Father do. And I speak only that which I hear my Father say. So you can see why Jesus was so highly developed and, and, and was operating to the peak where the lepers were healed and, and all the things that, that came about under his ministry because he, he gave precedent to what his father said. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That gives us great insight into the fact that sickness and disease uh, is, came when Satan came on this planet, and we know that it'll leave when Satan leaves this planet. But in the meantime, we're going to have to use our faith to bring these things under control while we're here on this planet. Through faith, we can supersede these curses or overcome the curses that are in the earth. And it's done by faith in God's Word and, and what God said. The Apostle Paul says that, that uh, he calls faith the law. Faith is a law of God. Well, when we talk about, uh, uh, say, a television set, for instance, a television set gives you all kinds of images, and, and it's all created by, I don't know, someone told me maybe 2,000 or maybe 20,000 now on some of these TV sets, dots on the screen. Now, every image you see on that television set is created by those dots and the coloration. Rearranged. Now, that gives us some insight into how the Word of God, you know, Jesus said it this way. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask what you will. Pray what you will. Say what you will. It shall be done. He didn't say, pray what you don't want to have. Pray something or say something that you don't want. But he said, say what you will. Pray what you will. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. Now, when you pray, what do you pray? Whatsoever things you desire. Now, I don't know about you, but for years I prayed what I didn't desire. <laughs> I prayed all the, I was telling God about all the stuff, you know, that it didn't, that it was happening. Well, he didn't say pray that. He said pray the desire. 
because that's the way you can destroy your faith while praying. If you're praying and saying things opposite to the Word of God, it, it will inhibit your ability to believe God in the situation. So it, it comes by saying what God said until you get that image on the inside of you. Now let's take, for instance, a copy machine. It gives substance to what you put on there. You, you, you lay a, this Bible on top of a copy machine and punch that button. You don't have to get somebody to proofread it, do you? Why? Because it is an exact duplication of what was there. Every I will be dotted, every T will be crossed. But now if you get somebody to type it, you better proofread the copy. <laughs> I would advise that. But why? God's Word produces after its kind. It's going to turn out just like God said if we don't rearrange the dots. But when people say, yeah, I know it says that, but now here's what happened to me. When I gave more, my car broke down, and I had to overhaul the transmission. Hey, you're rearranging the dots. I don't doubt that that's what happened to you. But you've got off on the wrong track. Satan comes to steal the Word. And he has got you quoting an image that is totally different from what God said in His Word. That may be a present fact in your life, but it's not the truth. The truth is what God said. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not telling you to deny what exists. Your car broke down. There's no power in denying it. But you need to call for abundance. And talk to that car till it's going to last a long time. And if you listen to most people, they're saying, this thing's going to fall apart before I get it paid for. <laughs> then they wonder why it did. My Uncle Joe has gone on to his reward now, but he bought a F-150 Ford pickup. And uh, he was a cattleman. He had some cows. And he'd get that thing, his trailer loaded with some cows. He'd go on down the hill. He'd get on the brakes. That thing go to shimming and shaking. And it just like to turn him over two or three times. He took it in to get it, uh, see what was wrong with it. They could not find out what was wrong with it. They said, we've never seen any light. We never had a, a truck like that. Uh, the factory came down, spent two weeks down there. They never could uh, find out what the deal was. And finally, they said, Mr. Cap said, we, we're just going to give you a new truck. We, we can't fix it. We don't know what's wrong with it. Now, listen to what he said. <laughs> he said, I told the man when I walked on the lot, if there's a lemon out here, I'll get it. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> he spoke exactly what he didn't want to happen, and he believed it with all his heart. Now what happened? He was led by his Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, by his Spirit to pick out that particular truck because the Scripture says, He shall have whatsoever he saith, if he believed out not his heart. And that was not the first time he had said that. Now, this is what happens. It creates an image. He saw himself getting the wrong truck. He spoke it. He saw it, and I'm sure he said it many times before that. Because, you know, when you get in a negative stream, that's just where you are. They could not find They never did find out. I, I guess they jumped the thing. They could not fix it. Now, Jesus proved inanimate objects will obey words. And don't ask me to explain all that. You get over into quantum physics and all of that, you get into some things that are really, I'll raise I'm telling you, but there's some things that we haven't understood yet. But words are some of the most powerful things in the universe. And God's Word is the most powerful thing in this universe. It created all things, and it's able to rearrange all things if we know how to use it and to properly apply, apply the Word of God through faith to the situation and circumstances of life. It's simple, but yet it's profound.
Jesus said, you can have what you say, but he said, most people are saying what they have. And I'm telling you, when you get a hold of this insight into this fact, it'll help you understand why situations happen like they do. Now, let me use one other illustration real close. A Polaroid camera operates by the polarization of light. You know, when they first came out, oh, they were miracles, you know. You just snap that camera and zzz, it goes out in a little bit. It takes takes about a minute or two or three, but it'll develop right before your eyes. Now, that film is so sensitive to light that whatever you expose it to, it will imprint on that film. Now, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 1, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made. Now, somebody made that camera. So it helps us understand that it works by the polarization of light. If you expose that film to the dark spot over here in this corner, then wonder why you didn't get a picture of the people in this church. I, I believe everyone in here could tell you why. You exposed it to the wrong thing. You're going to have to expose it to what you want the image of. If you expose your spirit to the negative things of life, by saying, I'll tell you, we'll never get over this. We'll be in debt the rest of our life. That's the image it's going to put down in here. And guess what? Everything produces after its kind. You will be led by your spirit to make wrong decisions, not the Holy Spirit now, the human spirit, to make wrong decisions to cause what you're saying to come to pass. It's self-fulfilling prophecy. And it goes back, all the way back to what Jesus said. He shall have what's ever he saith. Did you know that Jesus didn't say that to make that true? He said it because that's the way it was. He's just letting us in on it. So we wouldn't have to uh, do a seminar and teach people how to use a camera. Hey, now, you don't want to uh, expose it to something you don't want. You want to expose it to what you do want an image of. Can you make it any simpler than that? The invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood, the things that are made. And the David said, the entrance of the word bringeth light. When you're quoting the word, it enlightens your spirit and, and creates an image on your spirit or what we'd call the heart or spirit, whatever you want to call it, on the inside of you, and you will live out that image because you will be led, your spirit will go into search mode. It'll search the avenues of God's wisdom day and night to find a way to cause this to come to pass, to meet the right people, be in the right place at the right time for the right situation. And when you do that, there's no struggle with faith. If the Word abides in you, faith is there. And that Word creates the image. We've all quoted and heard this scripture qu quoted. You know, delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Well, you can take that several ways. But I believe what He's saying is that if you delight yourself in the Lord, you have to delight in His words. You keep it in your mouth, and it will create, the Word will create the desires in you that are of God. And then your human spirit, in contact with the Holy Spirit, will lead you and guides you to the place to be in the right place at the right time. It's the polarization of light. The more light you get on the subject, the better you can see it. And when you expose the human spirit to the Word of God, you're on your way to success in any area of life. It takes the struggle out of faith when you understand that that Word abiding in you is the light that lighteth you and the human spirit will cause you to be in the right place at the right time. You ever heard something told me? You hear people say, that something told me I ought not have done that, but I did. And yeah, that something was your spirit. And it could have been unctioned by the Holy Spirit. But if you did the wrong thing, it wasn't unctioned by the Holy Spirit. It was unctioned by, by the human spirit because 
when, when you plant a seed, when you speak words, you're planting seeds. And I farmed for 29 years, and I never did plant cotton and have soybeans to come up or cucumbers and bananas. Every seed produces after its kind. The DNA is in that seed. It demands of the soil, the soil has to respond. It has no choice to whatever seed was planted. The soil does not decide whether it's right or wrong what seed you planted, whether it's marijuana or a vegetable. <laughs> its job is to see that it grows and produces. You're the one that determines what seed you plant. And when you plant the seed of God, the DNA of God is in that seed. The DNA of God and the, the faith of God is in that. When it gets down here, then it produces light. And that's what, what God told Joshua. Don't let the book of the law depart out of your mouth. We'd say it today, don't let the New Testament depart out of your mouth. But meditate there in day and night that thou mayest observe, be able to see how to do and possess the promises of God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, kind of like Brother Higgins. Oh, well, it helps you not, but talk myself happy anyway. Glory be to God. Say this with me. I'm a believer. I'm a, believer. I'm a stronger believer, I'm a stronger believer. Now, than now than when I came. And I'm going to expose my spirit to, expose my to, the, word God, to the Word of God until I have the image have of, the image of the promise of God in my life, in my life. and I'll be led by my spirit to live out, out the reality of the Word <clears throat> and accomplish what God wants me to accomplish. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you would like a copy of the program you have seen today, call our toll-free order line at 877-396-9400 or visit our website at www.caps.tv. The program is available on CD and DVD for $12 plus shipping and handling. Just ask for the program number listed here and be sure to specify what format you want when ordering. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.